you are the greatest remedy to this world. You. Not the paper, not the words, you. Well, thank you, and I hope that you found some of the chat tonight about uh, ego and mind virus and the nine uh, positive emotions, pleasure, respect, honesty, enthusiasm, compassion, cheerfulness, discernment, bliss, and love was helpful. And really, it's, again, a preview of what's coming with cognitive law. So thank you, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Okay. Now I see uh, one question. Uh, here we go at some of the questions here. Okay. All right. I'm having a look at some of these things. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Looking at questions that people may have. Okay. Okay, we've got one one question up here at the uh, top that says, um, uh, you speak about chakras. And this is guest eight saying, you talk about chakras. Can you talk in depth about uh, Kundalini? I can talk about depth about Kundalini, but I, I, I would rather not. I'd rather sort of go through um, Q&A. There is quite a bit about the chakras kundalini and the connections between that and uh, the tree of life the sephiroth and, and other pre presentations of of energy centers of the body to conscious thought what i'd say is that um, the information on the nervous centers and energy centers and memory centers and color and frequency and thought have unfortunately been divided but I truly believe that this knowledge was understood by our ancestors and that while we find it brought back to us from the East there's every evidence to suggest that this knowledge was known as much in the West as it was in the East for example reincarnation was a major part of the ancient ancient philosophy of the druids the holy the kulian of course as you know in the west uh, reincarnation was pretty much wiped out from the religions and it became solely a refuge in the east so maybe we can talk about that a bit bit further but my my one thing i'd say about kundalini and and, and sephiroth and kabbalah and any kind of meditation is it's fine to talk about color it's fun to talk about chakra but what makes it a very practical tool a very practical thing is when you can bring it also back into the concept of words and the concept of action because when you can also bring it into the concept of action apart from the concept of meditation that's the completion of the loop otherwise it's incomplete look I, I, I have to tell you I would love to live uh, sometimes I would love to live in a monastery on a hill I would love it but that's not the real world the real world is day after day living in a house and apartment going to work taking a train taking a bus taking a car and dealing with the nitty-gritty of life and the nitty-gritty of life needs to some to give us something that we can use uh, day in day out with our action not just our intent so so a long-winded answer, but I hope that answers part of that question for guest date and for, for all of you. Uh, let me look for other questions. And I'm sorry, I have to... The way this is designed at the moment is... Um, I'm just looking to see uh, other questions here. Let me see what we've got. Uh, so just looking at the style of this... One sec, one sec. Uh, okay, I can see Ron is up and I can see that we've got another caller. So let me just uh, unmute. So here's a caller, one sec. Okay, it's Frank. Hi, can you hear us? Yes, Frank. Hi, it's Greg. Hi, Greg. Well, I, I wasn't going to jump in until the end of your questions, but after I 
just spent the last hour cheering the whole time you were speaking. I had to jump in and let you know how much I really appreciate what you said today. And I, I, I feel and resonate exactly with what you said. Um, and I know what you've done, you've helped free me up also to know what these words mean, uh, virtue conquers peril. And um, I too, like yourself, when I was young, knew that that was different than everybody else because I knew things were different, but I tried to conform and learned all the things that other other uh, boys and girls found were important. And I, as I grew and realized that those things weren't important, I started connecting back with who I was. In fact, when I was a child, it was not cool to defend somebody who wasn't popular. And I would often come to the aid of somebody who was uh, being harassed or or um, beaten up or bullied or something like that. And I'd find not only um, would I draw the wrath of all the people that were attacking that uh, boy or, or, or girl, but usually the one I was defending would end up joining them and attacking me back. <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, not easy, is it? It's not easy. But, um, <laughs> Greg, look, you, you've, you, are a, uh, you are a shining example, and life is a funny journey, isn't it? I mean, the things you, the things you discard return uh, at, at the right time, and you suddenly realise the importance of them. Um, and and Greg, look, I I think too, uh, one of the great examples that you are to to others is by simplifying your life, mm-hmm. your life becomes enriched. And you, you know what I'm saying. I exactly do. I had to lose everything to actually find where I was heading when I was a child. <laughs> yeah. Well, good on you, and, and thank you also for, for all the research you're doing, and uh, also thank you for the work you're doing on the um, on the uh, uh, elocution, because I know this is a very, very important part for everybody. So thank you. Well, you're very welcome. I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll... Get, we'll get that thing done as soon as I get myself on the Internet on a regular basis. And the, the last thing I, I just want to share is that um, there is a practical side to everything you've said. And um, are you freeing uh, this, freeing me up to understand the practical application even more so of the, of the chakra? Um, it means that we can trust, or I can, tr- I'm learning to trust more the still small voice that, that it, it comes to me now and even that, that, um, that photograph that got taken, whether it's the camera did it or whether it was real or not on Sunday, um, it was just because I was told to do it. I felt this inner voice saying to do it. So we need to trust our own inner voice. Instead of looking outside, know that the answers are coming from within. And if I, if I could really fast, I'd just like to sum up that I, under, I think I understand what you were saying last week about the awareness loves life and life loves awareness and that um, there is no one else coming to uh, – to save us, but that we're the ones that we've been waiting for and that the, the, the unique collective awareness, um, which is awareness loves life, is experienced through us. And when we become aware of that and move forward, and when I become aware of that and move forward with that knowledge, um, it's empowering and emboldening and um, also allows then for strength of character and, and uh, to stand up against things that ordinarily would have, would have presented what the old definition of fear was. But Anyways, absolutely. That's all I wanted to say. So thank you very much, Frank. No, good on you, Greg. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate Greg's comments, and uh, he's a very wise man, Greg. And uh, so uh, I've got to see Ron here. I'm going to um, take Ron, and then I see a couple of questions have been added. So we'll come back to those. Some of those are specific. In fact, one of them is a question to uh, to uh, Ron's package for the Australia. So let's get Ron up. And let's see if we can speak to him. Hello, Ron. You there? Hi, Frank. I'm on. How you doing? How are you? Good. 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 Hey, I just wanted to um, let everybody know that the, the the 709 package has been posted on the U of U, and this morning I added um, another part to it. So now it's Rev One. Um, it was basically taking the information and using it to answer their notices until they get off your back. But anyway, do I have time to kind of like explain what the 709 is just basically? Absolutely, Ron. Take all the time you need. Discovered back in December, actually I didn't discover it, but it was mentioned in one of 
Gene Keating's uh, transcripts that there was this tax credit on this Form 709. And um, I did some investigation on it and with other people's help, finally understood what was to take place, not what they wanted us to do. And let me explain. Um, uh, in the package, I provide documents and evidence from their own manuals and their own documents that they send us where the fraudulent conversion has taken place, and it's very simple. Our compensation for labor is categorized as a tax class 5, which is a gift, um, which gets reported on the Form 709. That's why it's, I called it Form 709. It's, it's a gift in a state tax form. Uh, the form is very complicated. I have included two samples, a sample to start off with, and then um, if you're going to do like five years in a row, you have to start at the oldest and work forward because you have to deduct your tax credit that you used last year this year. So you have to keep those things in mind. But there is a coded field that they call a document locator number that it's the third digit over from the left and it's it's shown in the documents that I provided that it's it's the coding field for the different type classes. So when the W-2 is also a class five uh, tax form. So now you have your compensation for laborers being reported on a W-2, which is tax class five. You fill out a W-4 when you go to work for your employer, which is considered a tax class five. And your 709 is a tax class 5 reporting form. It, it all fits perfectly. But to cover the fraud that they're committing, they take the 1040 and they add two things to it. Line 7 says is wages and um, stuff like that. Please attach the W-2. But what W-2? There's only one W-2. And you cannot use the W-2 for the tax class 5 on a 1040 because that's a tax class 2 reporting form. And then over on the left side in the margin, they say attach W-2s here. I cover all of that in great detail in the first folder in the package. So, well done, Ron. Well done. Uh, if, if there's any any questions, just please email me, but um, just remember that I'm kind of busy working on other projects. I, it looks like I have another one coming up here, but um, I'll be glad to help people along with it. Now, the Australian question, <laughs> I don't know what your tax your, your taxes are based on. Um, I would get in there and look for, uh, well, most of the answers were found in this thing called the Internal Revenue Manual. It's kind of like their guidebook on how, to, how the whole system works in the background. Maybe there's something similar to that in Australia. I don't know. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good topic because there's a couple of things that people have raised. Um, uh, for example, True Trust uh, on the questions is asked the question about where do they find information on properly annexing documents. So there's three oh. things I can think of straight away be before you answer, Ron. Um, there's three things I think have come up that are relevant, very relevant. It's all about how do we take research and brilliant research in one area and apply it in another. In the case of the Montana information on foreclosures, in the case of the tax credit information that you provided and in the annexing of documents for Australia, for Canada and for the UK and for other areas, it, it requires people in those areas to do the same as what you've done and I hope you can do it 
by bringing it into the relevance. So